trying to reconnect. Okay, there, I think it says it's live, are we? So, Mia, come on. My best friend gave me the best advice. He said each day is a gift and not a given right. Leave no stone unturned, leave your fears behind. If today was your last day, would you, with your life, would you say goodbye to yesterday? Would you live each moment like your last? Leave old pictures in the past, donate your time. <laughs> if today was your last day, <laughs> good morning, everybody. This is Jake Kleochko. Uh, it's a Thursday morning and we are here wrapping up breakfast. Uh, and uh, you know that song, If Today Was Your Last Day, that's one of the songs that my kids uh, play in their band. You know, uh, the kids have a band, it's called Clatch Company. And, uh, and that's one of the songs they play, If Today Was Your Last Day. Who's we'll the... Well, uh, who's the uh, band? Oh, who? Nickelback. Oh, Nickelback by Nickelback. Okay. Anyway, and uh, I thought it was a very appropriate uh, song to bring up today because the gospel today uh, talks to us about that exactly, about uh, to if today was your last day. So let's read the gospel from Saint Matthew, chapter twenty-four, verse forty-two to fifty-one. Jesus said to his disciples, stay awake. Are you already awake? It's seven o'clock in the morning. Stay awake for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Let's stop it right there and uh, go right ahead and commenting on this particular gospel for today's Mass. You don't know the day or the hour when uh, the angel of death is going to come visit and take us away. We don't know that time. But we know that all of us are headed towards that direction. You and I, one day, will die. Like as the saying goes, there are only two things you can be certain about. Who said that? I think it was Teddy Roosevelt who said, only two things you can be certain about in this world. Death and taxes. <laughs> death and taxes. Well, death is one certainty that will happen. Uh, in, in the future, we are all going to die. The question we have to ask ourselves is, are we prepared to die? And you know, God does not choose any time, you know. He chooses the best time to call us, the best time. But it can be for some while they're young, for some when they're middle-aged, for others when they're old, for some others when they're very old, right? Uh, it all depends on when God might determine our readiness to, uh, to face our Creator, to face Him. See? And uh, that's when death uh, occurs for us. What we need to do is always be prepared, always be ready for the eventuality of death. Because we will be foolish to, uh, to, to keep uh, the reality of death far away from our minds because there's nothing more certain in this life than the fact that we're going to die. So it is a good habit to always keep the, the idea of death uh, in front of us, in fact, not behind us, but in front of us. Something that we can look forward to, something that we can actually aspire for. Okay? Something that we can actually and should actually be uh, working towards to prepare for. Because in the end, 
this life is just a journey. It's just a journey. It's a journey to the other life. It's a journey to eternal life. Right? It's a journey to that point where we would eventually meet our Lord face to face in heaven. Okay? So, so if we have that mentality, um, we are going to uh, always be prepared for death. We will always be looking forward to that time when our Lord would finally call us in His presence. The question I think we should be asking ourselves now is, how do we get ready for that? How do we prepare for the eventuality of death? And here we're going to talk about some of the uh, Catholic best practices that we can employ, we can use to help us prepare for death. And the first one, the first thing that I would always recommend is to have the habit of doing an examination of conscience. An examination of conscience is a good, pious practice that the church has always encouraged every one of us, God bless you, every one of us to, uh, to live by and to practice every day. Okay? Um, here in our family, we do the examination of conscience uh, together every night before we, uh, before we go to bed. We, um, I gather my kids around uh, the uh, family room and, and uh, we, we uh, pray the uh, prayer of the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, to help us examine our conscience every night. And we ask ourselves to help us to, to examine our conscience. We ask ourselves three questions, very simple, three questions. And we dwell on those questions for about a minute each. Okay. What's the first question, kids? What are, we are... what are the good things I did today? Okay. So it's a ask ourselves: What are the good things we did to the, that day? Um, and and uh, that question alone can trigger plenty of answers, right? Like, um, did we spend some time to pray? Did we uh, did we uh, work well that day? Did we did we study well that day, right? Um, did we deal with our brothers and sisters in a charitable way that way? Did we go out of our way to serve others, right? Did we, uh, did we uh, try to live a, any particular virtue very well that day? Okay? Did we try to overcome those, uh, those difficult uh, challenges that we encounter during the day? Did we put the effort to do them? Did we, uh, did we uh, try to take advantage of the opportunities that, uh, that were presented to us during the day to uh, practice some mortifications, okay? to practice some sacrifice? How did we practice uh, cheerfulness that day? Were we going around our day grumpy and with a long face and, uh, and uh, being very negative about everything? Or did we approach things with a supernatural outlook? And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and approach things in a cheerful disposition. See? So there are many things we can ask ourselves just with that one question. What are the good things we did that day? Right? And we will talk to our Lord about those things in a short period of time of about a minute. Right? And done with question number one. What about question number two? Okay, Mia, thank you. What are the bad things I did today? Well, same thing. So if you ask yourself what the good things were, you can also ask yourself, what were the bad things I did that day? Was I lazy today? Okay. Um, did I uh, uh, neglect my uh, usual practices of piety and prayer for that day, for today? Did I commit any sin today? Okay. Did I commit any sin? Did I, did I uh, uh, you know, um, you can make a rundown of the usual sins that you might be committing from disobedience to your parents to uh, other things. Well, uh, you can ask yourself that question, right? What sins did I commit today? And not only sins, but imperfections. What about those things that, you know, I could have done better, but I didn't do? But which, by the way, is the third question, right? The third question being, what are the good things I did today, but, you know, which I could have done better, 
and which I can do better tomorrow? So that's the third question, folks, and uh, which could help us perhaps to understand what are the things that uh, we may have done well, but we could have done better. So that's examination of conscience for my family and for my kids. We, we do that every night, right? And we ask ourselves those questions. So doing an examination of conscience every day is a good way to prepare for that eventuality of death. Okay? And to always keep death uh, uh, not only in the back of our minds, but in front of us as a reality that we uh, are really heading towards. Okay, what's another good uh, Catholic practice? Frequent confession. I know we have talked about confession uh, a number of times already, and here is another good time to reiterate the, uh, the whole idea of confession. And, uh, and today I'd like to remind you that, you know, if, if you want to really practice uh, this, uh, going to this sacrament frequently, the best thing to do is put it on a schedule incorporate it into your regular schedule so you don't forget make it an appointment with god right to go to confession uh whatever frequency you determine will be best for you uh in my personal case in in our case of our family we go to confession every week and uh we just think that that is the best um, practice for us every week we feel like uh there's plenty of material in one week's time uh, to, to ask pardon uh, from our Lord for. And, uh, and so we, we head over to church every Saturday morning. That's our schedule. Every Saturday morning after uh, uh, the Saturday morning Mass, then uh, we line up for confession and uh, we make it a point uh, to regularly, uh, as much as we can, regularly every Saturday morning go to confession. Okay, then uh, number three tip here. Um, what else can we do to always be prepared? The third thing is to always try to avoid temptations. See, our Lord was talking in the gospel about the thief. Death can come like a thief in the night, right? That will steal life out of, your, out of you. Well, not only death, but the devil is also another thief. See? The devil is another thief who will steal your happiness your eternal happiness, and he will take advantage of every opportunity he can to tempt you every minute of the day. So avoiding temptations is uh, something that we always have to do. We always have to be on guard, right? We always have to be on guard against the devil's temptations. Now, and here's uh, uh, something that not everybody might be aware about, but uh, we'll bring it up here. Uh, this is the fourth tip. Avoiding having to put yourselves in an occasion of sin. You see, uh, it's one thing to avoid temptations. It's quite another to actually put yourself in an occasion of sin. Okay? We don't realize that. But sometimes we actually court temptation. See? We actually court it. We actually attract it. Why? Because we wittingly or unwittingly put ourselves in occasions of sin right and you have heard me many times say this right um, we should not linger in bed longer than we should that's why we make it a habit to jump out of bed in the morning once you hear that knock on the door right i always tell you don't spend too much time in your bedroom or in the bathroom if you are not really doing much in there, right? You only stay in your bedroom or in your bathroom to do what is necessary. And beyond that, it's a waste of time. It becomes an occasion of sin. Okay? You're attracting the devil. It's like telling the devil, hey, come devil, I'm available here. You know, come and tempt me. See? That's what occasions of sin are all about. And if you put yourself in those occasions, if you attract the devil, then, well, that by itself is already a sin. Okay? To put yourself in an occasion of sin and not to avoid it right away is already in itself a sin. Okay? So we be careful about that. Okay? What else can be occasions of sin, especially nowadays? Huh? Staying in the bathroom, lingering in the bathroom. We already said that. What else? 
the computer very good right the computer <laughs> see so the computer is a nice tool it's a very good tool but when it is misused okay that becomes an occasion of sin when we do not control ourselves uh, as far as using the computer and all our gadgets are concerned in fact from telephone to computer uh, iPads and well, and TV television that then we are putting ourselves in an occasion of sin because you know there's just so many things in there and uh, you don't need me to elaborate on these things I think you know what I mean uh, there's so many temptations around there that can uh, that can tempt us so what we need to do is run away from temptation right run away flee don't even give the devil any instance any occasion to even tempt you okay? flee from temptation whenever you feel like you are about to succumb to the devil's temptation just flee just get out of that situation get out of that occasion of sin okay that you might happen to to uh, fall into the devil is like a thief right he will take advantage of every opportunity to tempt you okay so idleness, by the way, just before I forget, idleness is another occasion of sin, right? And an idle mind is the devil's workshop, right? You've heard me say that also many times, right? An idle mind is the devil's workshop. So always keep yourselves busy. Never, never just laze around doing nothing, right? You are courting temptation that way. So idleness is the devil's workshop. So... Confession, what else did we say? Examination. Examination of conscience, fighting against temptations, not putting yourself in an occasion of sin. Those are the basic, the most basic Catholic best practices we can recommend today to help us always keep death at the forefront of our sight. To always remember, we are on a journey to heaven and at the end of this journey is jesus christ who will be welcoming us to his presence are we prepared and if today was your last day see if you lived your life thinking that today is my last day and before this day ends i'm going to be in the presence of my lord how do you think are you going to live this day how do you think are you going to go through this journey of a day's life, if today was your last day. I think that's a good thought to always have in mind as we wake up in the morning. And I hope today may not be your last day, but I hope it can be one of the best days of your life. Have a good day, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye.